Hello. Hi. Sorry. Always have a bit of trouble with the um. There we go. That's better framed. Hello. Uh, we welcome to this week's live stream of my thoughts and review of this week's episode of Doctor Who. Um, if this is your first time, if you're watching this back at a later point, um, I talk broadly in general about my thoughts and feelings on the episodes and then we uh, go specifically into the spoiler zone with a sign with a sign that I usually leave up here so anyone coming in later on can see oh hey oh hello um yes as I say start off general broad strokes then we go into the spoiler zone with a sign saying as such um so yeah first of all um well two quick housekeeping-y type things um firstly if you want to know the thoughts, brief as they are, on um, the rumour that Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker will be leaving after Series 12, I have mentioned something... Well, bye. I have mentioned something down in my vlog. Um, the short version is, whilst it's still a rumour, I'm not putting much stock in it, but we'll see what happens. Um, and I hope that the next Doctor, regardless of when Jodie decides to leave, is another female. Um, but yeah, further thoughts on that are um, in the vlog down below. Uh, secondly, I have a family dinner um, next week, which will basically be taking place when Doctor Who is on. Uh, so obviously I can't watch it live, which means I can't do the stream as, you know, like now. Um, so depending on because i do have an early morning on mondays so depending on when i get home either i'll just watch it time shifted and share my thoughts directly after the episode still on the sunday or i will watch the recording on monday and then do the review then obviously avoiding any spoilers or anything in the meantime um yeah, basically, your input is welcome on that if you think I should do it on the Sunday or the Monday, but at the end of the day, it really will depend on what time I get home and how late it is and, you know, sensible stuff like that that I um, have to take care of myself first. But yeah, so next week's episode will happen, but it won't be happening at this time and possibly on Monday. Um, I need to wipe my glasses, so if you excuse me for a moment. Um... So yeah, this episode, The Witchfinders, um, I don't know how I feel. Um, I, do I think it's a terrible episode? No, not entirely or as a whole. Um, there are some very nice character moments and scenes that I think hold, will hold up on their own. Um, Alan Cumming is the primary, you know, named guest actor. And the other act, the other supporting cast are all very good as well, as as is normal. Oh, four people, hello. Um, as is normal. Um, but yeah, the big the big celebrity of the week is Alan Cumming playing King James. Um, which we'll get into more details in the spoiler zone, but okay, so on that, um, I I'm, I'll get to that in a, in a bit. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. It's kind of ironic, given that he trans he has a Bible translation um, named after him. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know historically if that were the case. Um, so he was very good. Um, there, there is an alien menace that I, and I think that's where it kind of falls down for me is I don't know how I feel about the alien menace. Now there is a build up towards a something, but whether or not that payoff works, um, I'm not, I'm not sure about. I don't know if that does or doesn't. <laughs> you know, I still haven't seen Delta and the Bannerman, um, which is terrible. Um, 
But yeah, no, no, it's bad that I haven't seen Delta and the Bannerman. I'm not going to comment on the episode I haven't watched yet. So yeah, um, yeah. So I was saying, I um, at the end of the trailer teaser yesterday, I thought that guy looks and sounds a bit like Peter Capaldi. I can't watch it now. I'm doing this. <laughs> um, it's not Peter Capaldi. I'm assuming it's it's um, Alan Cumming, but um, with the beard, obviously the big tell is the eyes. Um, and obviously they're like brows but yeah obviously it wasn't I knew it wasn't but it was just that in that brief moment it was like huh that what no and then yeah so it's quite shocking um yeah no I, I've heard about that about Delta from the Man um I've seen reviews of and, and stuff of Delta from the Man um and I also know that yes that's where um Bannerman Road got its name Ooh, up to six people um I will show you very briefly um the slight problem I have with I'm watching classic Doctor Who at the moment. Let me just see if we can turn you around. So you see those two brown columns here. That is where I keep my Doctor Who collection, my classic and my new. Like um, One of them contains all the um, classic Doctor Who DVDs. The other one is modern Doctor Who, Torchwood, Sarah Jane Adventures. And I think I've got like one to 60 of Big Finish. But in front of it, is a big pile of war history DVDs, which means getting to my classic Doctor Who videos is a bit of an issue right now. So whilst I do own a copy of Delta and the Bannerman, um, it's not easy easily accessed without digging out everything. As I said, I've got an early start tomorrow, so um, after I've done this and um, today's vlog, I will probably be um, you know thinking about excuse me about getting ready for bed. Um, which, uh, to be honest, these are I am still in my pajamas. It's been a PJ weekend. Uh, so yeah, um, Yaz, I think, has had gets um, a slightly better deal this time. Uh, I think someone will edit King James and Ryan as Jack and Yanto in a drift. Maybe, maybe. Um, there we go. Sorry. So yeah, um, I don't think it was a terrible episode overall. I think there was a nice character moment. So yes, yeah, got a little bit more. Um, I don't think she got more character development necessarily, but she got some stuff to do. Um, certainly at the beginning, she was sort of keyed into this isn't quite right. Um, <laughs> you're making very strange statements there, um, then, but. Um, I welcome the interaction. Um, so yeah, I I said the other day that so far I don't think there are any terrible episodes. There are, and the example I used was Fear Her because it was the first one that jumped into my mind as being a bad episode, certainly for the new series. And I would, certainly wouldn't put this as bad as Fear Her, but I'm not. I would say so far for me personally, this. It feels uneven. It feels um, just a bit strange and probably mean in places. And um, yeah, I, I think this is the um, the first episode of this series that I'm not. Oh, I've lost a couple of people. Never mind. I, I'm not 100% um, enthusiastic for. Um, but again, you know, it was. You know, again, oh, the acting was good, the cinematography was good, some amazing shots, um, especially going over the forest. There was this great um, shot of this tree that I thought, oh, that's a pretty silhouette. Um, so it showed off its location very well. But I don't know, this wasn't working for me. Um, so, yeah, um, <clears throat> on that note, let us uh, get into the spoiler zone and I'll try to explain a bit more detail about why it's not quite. Not quite working for me, so uh, let me just grab forks again and uh, get everything. Oh, uh, excuse me, sorry. Get everything. Uh, there we go. How's that? Yes, we're in, we're in frame. So, yes, we are now officially into the spoiler zone and. Um, so it opens on festivities. They're um, talking about uh, a coronation 
um, I think this is Victoria, one of the coronations. Anyway, and they, then they think they're like, you know, some kind of medieval Renfair type thing, I don't know. But um, then they're kind of they're not a bit happy go lucky. The doctor's like, oh, apple bobbing, I'll have, a, I'll have an apple bob me. And um, so she talk, goes into the barrel, she's talking to the boy that's attending it, and they're asking about, oh, is it like Halloween? And I was like, no, it's just Sunday. You know, and then they realise from the accents they're somewhere up north. Um, at one point, Graham recognises a hill. I think it said Pendleton Hill, um, which, you know, realised they made, oh, okay, we're in Lancashire. Um, and like I said, they have they show off the location really well. It looks really nice. And um, at some point, someone comes along, makes a big announcement. And, um, you know... We get to the witch trial. But prior to that, prior to actually going to the witch trial, we do see someone skulking around in the trees, wearing what looks like a plague mask, um, but it's like you know like a black mask with like a long long beak on it. Um, so he's he's um, so they're skulking around, and it's like, oh, what's going on here? Is and um, yeah, so this uh, lady. Um, who's like runs the village because her husband she basically inherited the land from her husband and um yeah she she dunks this old old lady and yeah she makes a thing about we have uh, we have carved this um ducking stool from the wood of one of our, uh, our oldest trees and you know it is this tree is sacred and and so um, the young woman that Yaz at the beginning keys on to as being upset by the whole procession and she's like, you see her in the bank, she's crying because Yaz tries to approach her and say, hey, you make great. Right. And it's her grandmother, grandmother that's getting ducked. Now, obviously, moments before, the doctor's like, oh, remember, we're in history, don't tread on, you know, don't tread on history, don't, um, you know, <clears throat> don't interfere, even if you see an injustice, whatever. And then, of course, she jumps into the water and um, rescues, rescues the Nana and um, Willa, the um, young lady that we end up following is called Willa. And so she she rescues Willa's Nan, but it's too late. She she died probably from shock or something. Um, they recite um, before she dies. Willa and her Nan recite this kind of prayer to each other: "I'll be with you in the water, in the air, and in." The, in in the ground it's it's quite touching actually it's quite a nice little um blessing that they share um yeah one comment i was gonna make before i sort of got into it is that previously i mean like even from the unquiet dead um the doctor makes a point when rose is about to run out in the tardis and oh look at history um and calls her barbarella and you know so she, there have been times where the Doctor and the Companions have tried to dress, well, at least the Companions have tried to dress a little bit more period appropriate. And I'm thinking about... <sighs> yeah, and at the times I don't think they have, because I was thinking, I don't think... Um, I can't remember the time Martha dressed up, necessarily. But, yeah, they are basically walking around history in their regular, you know, 21st century Earth street clothes and that kind of, like... That does get commented on. Um, so the guy who's skulking around, as it turns out, is King James, the Alan Cumming character. Uh, it's quite a um, dramatic reveal. Okay, so they pull Willa's gran out of the water. She turns out she's died. You know, um, they're all like, "Oh, who are you? And why have you interfered?" And now we'll never know for sure if she was a witch or not. And the doctor, like, because she took her jacket, her coat off. I said, I'm, I'm, oh, hang on a second, I forgot my thing. Um, you know, and shows a paper and it's like, oh, the witch finder general. Oh, well, why didn't you see? And yeah, so the doctor basically poses the witch finder general, said, like, these people are now under my protection. This is my team. You know, leave, you know, don't, don't hurt, because they were going to, because the ceremony got interrupted, um, they weren't sure. So I think they were going to, like, either hang again, like, you know, hang uh, Willis Gran or, burn her or something but they, they mentioned hanging before so like they were gonna like double kill her or something and there's this whole thing about they've killed 36 people already as witches and so you got this whole thing graham mentions that he's done the witch tour um but he doesn't remember this particular village being on the tour 
So that's like, well, why? What's going on here? Is, is something happened? And it's like, so I guess the whole thing where they think that the um, leader of the village, Becca, uh, who we find out is a cousin of Willa, um, but she married up. Um, you know, he's kind of got a bit cuckoo puffs and is like, we will cleanse Satan from this land, even if we have to kill every single person, you know, really going a bit Fruit Loops. Um, but she's like quoting the King James Bible just um, before King James makes his entrance. He's like, oh, I hear what, you know, like took his cue and he took his mask off. And said, Forgive the um, dr dramatic dramatics. I find it, you know, it, it keeps me safe, you know. And I'm like, <sighs> King James was an interesting character in this thing. I, I don't know much about him as as an historical figure, um, much as I don't know much about any of the um, historical royals or much history in general. Um, so yeah, to answer Dan's question, was he... He... When the Doctor shows him her psychic paper, it says he reads it as Witchfinder General's assistant and assumes that Graham is the Witchfinder being the oldest male. And Graham's like, oh no, we, we've got, got a very flat structure, these are my you know, thing. And like, so the doctor says that she goes undercover, like, you know, send a woman to find a woman, that kind of thing. And King John James is like, oh, very you go, stealthy, yes, I like this. And um, what was it he calls um, Ryan his. Um, he he makes a comment to Orion about him being some kind of some kind of prince, you know. I certainly don't think he's um he, he's not being colorblind, but he's not being disrespectful either. And I wish I could remember the word he used. If if someone else can remember the word um, James used to describe Ryan, but yeah, he definitely flirts with Ryan and says, you know calls him like my, my prince and. Um, you know, you we could learn a lot. I could learn a lot from you. You can learn, you know, from me. And he, he sort of gives him this like eye brooch as a protective amulet. And um, so yeah, um, whether or not the real King James uh, was gay or bi or whatever he identified as, I don't know. Uh, the fact that he's been played by Alan Cumming, I don't know if that's um, because Alan Cumming has played um, both. As far as I'm aware, he's played both gay and straight characters. I haven't. I'm not completely aware of all his back catalogue. Um, like I think he just takes parts that he likes the look of, and that's fair enough. Oh, excuse me. Ah, oh, bit dry. So yeah. Um, Ellen Cumming as King James, flirting with Ryan, was kind of interesting. Um. And aside from being a bit dismissive of the Doctor and calling her girl and all this stuff, and there is a, co <clears throat> a comment the Doctor makes later on, she's like, oh, if I was still a bloke, I would just, like, got on with this, nobody would have questioned it, and it would have been, you know, fine. Um, so, yeah, there's... So, yeah, King James I liked. Um, and it's, it kind of makes me want to maybe, maybe look a bit. There's a, a scene later on when they're walking, and... Um, Discuss like Ryan's like oh you know it's all right Sai you, you can share your problems with me talk to him and it's like oh well my father died and Ryan's like oh yeah my father and and, and my nan yeah, my mum my, my nan died and he's like yes but my um father was killed by my mother and all this stuff and like all these things that have happened to to James which I'm assuming is historically accurate and um, Ryan's like all right yeah that's worse so they. The relationship between the two of them is actually quite sweet in its own weird way. Um, so yeah, so uh, Yaz goes to catch up with Willa to see what's going on and offer her help. And as Willa is um, burying her nan, she, this uh, muddy tentacle comes up and tries to attack her. And Because um, uh, initially she was just doing her prayer ritual, be with you, and, and the water and the air and the thing. And um, so she's not really paying attention. And Yaz is sort of keeping respectful distance, just sort of keeping an eye on her until the tentacle comes out and that uh, Yaz whacks it one with the um, with the uh, the spade that's nearby, the shovel that's nearby, because obviously burying a body. It makes sense there's a shovel there. And... Um, Will was like, oh, what was that? And so, yeah, she's like, she's telling the doctor about it later on. She's like, no, no, 
I don't think Willow brought this thing forth because she was also scared of it. And the Doctor scans the mud splashes on her, um, her jeans and is like, oh, it's just mud. I don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, they go and they investigate the mud and um, they find a bit. She put, she's put in a jar. Oh yeah, so it turned, yes. So Willow, her gram was a herbalist, um, you know, the local, you know, medicine woman. And um, yeah, this is where we get the reveal that they're, she and Becca are cousins, and she thinks Becca finally turned on was grand because she did. Um, I'm finding it very hard to be enthusiastic about describing this episode. Um, so yeah, uh, the Doctor, because Becca's feeling all out of sorts because she wants to leave the village, and the Doctor's like, "That's fine, you know, but first, can you help us, help you, and all this?" So um, she scans her and there's like nothing wrong there's nothing medically wrong there's nothing you know she's not been infected by any alien presence that the doctor can tell and then um yaz basically recognizes it as an anxiety yeah because she talks about um izzy flint or something like that when she was bullied by izzy flint and uh, she decided that she was gonna be stronger than that and take her lumps and she said oh it's my year of hell and like it was like, oh, no, no, literally hell. It was just, it was really, really hard. But I managed to um, push through and decide I wasn't, I was going to, from then on, I was going to stand up to the easy flints in the world. And she's like, I can't stand up to Becca. Uh, so, yeah, they go back, they investigate the uh, mud, like the doctor grabs one of the sample bottles to put some in. And then, like, she manages to catch a bit and it agitates itself. I'm like, oh, so, oh, what's going on? And she's like, and then she's like, oh, I'm disappointed. It's just mud. And then, because um, it, it looks like it did quite a hole. And then she puts it in the jar and they're like, oh, now I'm less disappointed. And it's been really kind of kind of cute about it. And um, it does the thing where the Doctor's completely focused on the, the, the thing in front of her and um, Willa and Yaz are like, uh, okay. And they're, like, they're looking at something behind the Doctor. So the Doctor's facing this way and they're facing that way. And she's like, uh, Doctor, stop looking at that and look at this. And it's like, Willa's gran, or like she said, oh, you're not Willa's gran, you're, you're, you're possessed by her. Um, you want this, and there are, turns out there are other mud zombies that come forth. And it's again, kind of like, what's going on here? Why is there mud zombies? What's, are they the tentacle creatures? Um, she gives her the bottle, and she eats the bottle, and puts the mud back in her, and like, all right, tell, talk, you talk to me, talk, you talk, I'll talk, uh, we can work this all out. And she, oh, I hate it when they don't talk. Um, so there's a bit of a chase. The doctor. At this point, because uh, Ryan and Graham have been trying to prevent further witch hunters, because they they do go through. Sorry, I'm jumping around. They do go to Becca's into, into Becca's room and discover a couple of things that she's got an axe under her bed, me empty medicine bottles in the thing, and lots of handkerchiefs, like monogrammed handkerchiefs, which need more than things. So they find all this stuff. And then it's oh, this is before they go out. So James and his entourage, and well, he's got one person, but yeah. So James has been flirting with Ryan, um, showing him his witch finding kit. Um, Pricker gives Graham the hat of his first witch finder, uh, which has a bullet hole because he saved his life and then betrayed me, so I had him shot. But Graham wears it for most of the episode, and it, it kind of suits him. Um, lots of flirting. Um, and then obviously they see the Doctor Will and Yaz with these zombie, you know, these mud zombies, and they're like, "Oh, you must be a witch." You know, it's a whole back and forth. Oh, you must be a witch, you know, because uh, Will is scared, and she's like, "Oh, I did wonder why she called herself Doctor." So this is where we actually get to a quite a good part because the Doctor is obviously um, taken prisoner, like you, know, to be tried as a witch. Um. And she and James have a dialogue scene. And she's sort of talking to him like he's saying, Tell me about your wand. And like, I'll tell you how you can I'll tell you what, I'll I'll let you have my wand and I'll, you know, give you all the answers, you can let me go, all this stuff. And like having this back and forth. Um, there's allusions to James's mother leaving him when he was less than one years old, or who what kind of mother would do that? And they're like, Oh hello. Uh, I was anticipating a dark doctor moment if I really miss those dramatic oncoming storm monologues. Yeah. Um 
not really my not my real name um i'll just call you not um yeah no i was kind of expecting a non-coming storm thing as well but i still think the dialogue the conversation that she and james had was quite sweet i, I that was one of the moments that really stood out to me as a good character moment um I would like Jody to have an oncoming storm moment, but I'm not sure this was necessarily the episode to have it in. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you that she sort of needs that kind of moment. But yeah, she says something about like James's mother and how could you possibly know when like this and like nobody ever works out what happened, why your mother left you all this stuff. So yeah, that conversation, that moment between them, I really enjoyed. Um, that's kind of intercut with the rest of the gang um, following the mud monsters, mud zombies, which, as it turns out, go, they're like as Ryan points out at one point, we're all the way around the woods just to come back where we started because they're back in Becca's house. And uh, yeah, so I'm really, like I said, I can't, I didn't hate it, but I can't really. So it turns out that the um, the tree that the ducking stool was made of, um, Becca cut from the top of the hill because it was ruining her view. And that allowed the mud monsters to escape. And basically, um, one of the tentacle, as you, you see the scene where she's cutting down the tree and a tentacle comes out and kind of pricks her leg. So that's why she was um, eventually turning against Becca because... She said to Becca, look, you know, I need medicine, I need to sort this out. She tried to clean the wound herself, it wasn't working. She, that's where she felt like Satan infested her and she was trying to do Satan's work, uh, God's work, to clear out all the witches in the village. Um, and throughout this dialogue of her explaining it, she tries, yeah. The doctor tries to get James to say, look, you know, let's not do this, but they do, they duck her. Um... There's actually quite a good moment um, when the guys are like, Ryan's like, oh wait, hear that, there's a bell, there's, there's a witch trial, what's going on? Like, the Doctor would never let that happen. Oh wait, unless, and then they realize, oh, it must be the Doctor herself. Um, so yeah, she, um, they duck her, they're like, bring her back up, bring her, I'm the witch, I'm the witch fire general, and, like, and she's, and Becca's like, I follow my king, and her eye starts bleeding like blood, you know, like mud, sort of comes out of her eye here. And um, James eventually gives the word for the stool to be brought back up. Excuse me. And of course, the doctor's not on it um, because she's obviously escaped and swam off. Um, she says, oh, I'm good at holding my breath, which we know that's an established factor of the doctor. And, you know, good with chains. And she makes an allusion to a wet weekend with Houdini. And again, that's something we don't know in which body that happened. I'm sure Houdini's been mentioned before as a friend of the Doctor, so yeah, that's that was something that kind of yeah. In fact, I am sure that um, at some point they've mentioned him being friends with Houdini, so that's a bit of established canon, I guess. Um, yeah, so she she escapes, um, she confronts um, Becca because like when Becca tried to touch the tree, she got like a shock of it, which is like weird. She's like, look, tell me what's going on, tell me what's happened, or we'll try and fix this. And essentially the mud monster fully takes over Becky's um, Becca's body. And this is kind of where it loses it for me. The makeup wasn't terrible. Um, it was weird and creepy. It this is I don't know how if this is an obscure reference or not, but Superman 3, which I know, I know. Not the best, not the favourite, but towards the end where the lady, I can't remember her name, but she kind of gets possessed by the computer and sort of becomes partly computerised. And As a kid, and even now, that still creeps me out because it was like, ooh, what have I done to her? Um, the makeup effects in this episode reminded me a little bit of that makeup effect um, for like the thingy. So that kind of, for me, <clears throat> like I said, as a makeup effect, in and of itself, it was quite good. You know, it looked good. Um, and I guess because it reminded me of something that creeped me out as a child. It had an extra layer of creepiness on it. 
but as a, a race and I can't even remember what they're called I, I try to make a note of it in my head to remember but um, yeah it basically turns out that they're an invading force and the tree was an ancient lock to keep them in the so Pendle Hill is a prison essentially for an invading alien force uh, they abduct King James because obviously you know he's the leader of the country and they're going to try and take over the world of course and um so they need their king to possess james so everyone gets knocked out they chase them up the hill because um they, they the doctors explain how the tree is like an ancient lock um no, te techno wood thing um from whoever locked them in the first place and um they light torches there's a moment where um Willa says, I'm, I'll join you, besides I'm the only one who knows about the thing. So like, they, they light the wood because apparently the smoke from it will keep the um, the aliens in check. So they go up the hill, you get to the trunk. Um, James is kind of, you know, prostate against him. Like, what's going on? What do you want? And so we need you, you're, you're, our king will fill you and you will, like, help us rule this planet. And... Um, so this big mud, mud tentacle comes out and uh, this is where uh, I don't know if it's full CGI or if they used a bit of stop motion but basically you've got a mud tentacle thing sort of coming out the trunk and going out the ground and they put like a little face in it um, so you got like the eyes and then like a mouth it's kind of a little um, that to me looked a bit hokey like I said, if if there was some claymation in there, um, again going to a slightly of well, possibly I don't know how obscure it is, but to refer to Return to Oz, the um, the Disney film, where the troll um, when they die, the effects on the king's the the tentacle king's face. Kind of reminded me of the effects um, towards the end of um, Return of Towards when they're dying, the trolls are dying and sort of going back into themselves. And then, then it kind of worked. Here it didn't. Um, I said, if there is some claymation involved in there, I guess that's quite good because claymation I know takes a long time. If it's CGI, it's not this. You, you're basically, your, um, your alien threat is. Um, possessed dead, uh, possessed zombies, like possessed dead women, um, possessed leader who is the one that can actually talk, and then a giant tentacle made of mud. And I think that's why it didn't really work for me towards the end. Like I said, some stuff leading up to it was interesting, and you are intrigued as to where it's going. And I will stand by the, the dialogue between um, the Doctor and King James, you know, happily. Ah, oh, but the rest of it really didn't work for me. The conclusion didn't really work. So basically, they um, she fixes the lock. Um, the mud falls out the zombies. The king kind of gets knocked back, um, and eventually the you know, the leader falls out of Becca's body. Tries to, uh, but Becca sort of fights her, and so um, James takes one of the torches and kind of you know tortures her to death. Basically, she kind of explodes. And the doctor's like, I'm not happy with that. You know, she didn't like the fact she did that. So you got your, you got your thing, you got your Satan. Um. <laughs> Hi, Cadbury. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not outside of some individual character moments. Yeah, I agree. It wasn't. Um. Yeah. Hi, Richard. Uh, it's not Richard. Hello. It's nice that you've decided to actually start chatting. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it really was kind of a met episode. Good character moments, well acted, but the conclusion kind of falls down for me. Um, this is good. This is, for me, this is good because so far I've been quite enthusiastic about them all of them. And I'm like, no, no, I can sit and criticise something. I can say, you know, this isn't working for me. Um, the finale is basically Willa and James, um, because previously his, his guard, um, was killed by the zombies. Um, because he was in attack mode, otherwise they were at that point fairly passive. Um, 
and they're like trying to protect Sawyer. And he invites Ryan to come back with him to London to serve by his side or be his new protector. Uh, Ryan gives him the um, the talisman back. Said, "Oh, I'm gonna keep my eye on you." You know all this stuff. Um, but yeah, the doctor's not happy, so she kind of ignores James until the last moment, and he's like, "What manifest? Yeah, she's tired. So, what manifestation is this?" And like, oh, it's just you know the way I got here. And um, she quotes Asimov at the end. Um, you know, any uh, any technology significantly advanced is indistinguishable from magic, and I'm about to prove that to you. Because um, obviously he sees them all getting in this little box, and he's like, "What's going on here?" And yeah, you know, she quotes Asimov, and then um, basically they they man they they warp off, and um, James and Willard basically stood there, going, well, "There's the thing." So yeah, hello. I feel like the episodes keep feeling there, apart from last week's episode, which was okay. Pulp Fiction reference was awesome though. Yes, no, that was fun. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction, but. Um, uh, yeah, Graham quoting what James thinks is a Bible quote, and he's a nice Tarantino. <clears throat> that was quite funny. Um, I okay. I think my um, sorry, uh, sorry, Capri. Um, like I said, I think overall I've enjoyed this series more than um, some other people seem to have. Um, apparently, you more than you seem to have. And I do agree that Comblam was a lot of fun and I, that was a good episode. Um, but this one definitely falls into the meh category. It's definitely not the best. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's nice that I can sort of sit here and go, you know what, that was kind of naff and I didn't like it. And I didn't tell you why I didn't like it. So maybe I'm, as a, a reviewer, I am growing. Uh, my, you know, I can sort of express my different opinions and not get all angry. Because I could go on a rant. Oh, one moment. I could go off on a rant about people who have been negative. I <clears throat> obviously these are probably a little bit clickbaity titles, but I don't tend to click on sorry uh, videos that have the titles of "This thing is shite," and I am going to tell you why. And sometimes they're like hours long. Yeah, we keep having what would be called filler episodes in other shows, but it's not the good of the whole season to be made of them. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem people are having with Chibnall as a writer. Um, like I said, I, I keep forgetting he wrote like 42. 42 wasn't one of my favourite episodes either, so... Um, I will I will say this now that you're here, because I said this earlier, nobody's here. My thoughts on Jody, the r rumours about Jody and Chris leaving um, after season 12. As they are currently still rumours, I'm not going to put too much stock in it. Um, I've given more thoughts in my vlog down below. Um, I think the episodes have been fine. I think the Doctor is great. However, nothing is coming as particularly memorable for me. Um, thank you, Not. Uh, Richard, I'm enjoying your reviews. Yeah, but you tell it like it is each week. Oh, thank you, Richard. Uh, Cadbury's, it was better the, than the man with the baby. The baby, I oh, will put... I will put the episode with Fear Her, 42 and other crap um, episodes. No, I um I like the Saranga conundrum, but fair enough if you didn't. Um, but I like the Saranga conundrum as a silly runaround space adventure. <clears throat> I can see why other people wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. But yeah, broad strokes, <clears throat> if Chris Chibnall um, and Jodie Whittaker are leaving, then okay. Um, I've, like I said, I've got more thoughts in the vlog down below. Um, but essentially, I hope I, that the next Doctor will still be a woman, regardless of whatever Jodie decides to do. Um, but into, whilst it's still a rumour, I'm not going to sort of commit any sort of strong thoughts to it beyond that. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, it's just, I didn't... It, this was uneven. Uh, it was uh, Kablam was much better, but not bad overall. Um, hello, Alex. Uh, you're new. I don't think I've noticed your name before, so welcome. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so far I've been enjoying it. What was the worst episode of the series so far? I think probably this one um, is the worst so far for me. Um, when I sort of rewatch them all at some point, um, I will then sort of 
can let myself decide further. But so far, I've literally only seen them once each. Oh, uh, yeah. So, again, quick thing, a um, bit of maintenance. I am away at a family dinner t next week, which means I will not be able to be doing the review at this kind of time. Depending on what time I get back and obviously watch the episode, I will either do it on Sunday time shifted. Um, hello. Um, or I will do it um, on the Monday. But, but again, I will do it the same way. I will watch the episode and then immediately come online to stream and talk to you about it. Maybe on Sunday if I'm back home early enough or not. <laughs> Tonight we have mud zombies. Yay! Uh, yeah, the mud zombies were an interesting concept. I just think it fell down um, at the end. But yeah, next week is not going to be at this time. It'll either be later in the day on Sunday um, or mon more likely than Monday, I think. Um, no, we're not going to do that. Hey, it's me, Annie. Hey, Annie. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much my thoughts. It was a solid meh. Good character moments. I liked Jodie. Um, Alan Cumming was very good as King James. I liked the Doctor and King James' conversation. Oh, Len. Sorry, yeah. Um, Geek is a juicy boy. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much my thoughts. Anyone got any questions while we're sort of here and being chatty? Any, any other thoughts? Nope, we're all good. All right, um, thanks for being here. I've got up to six people watching live. <clears throat> that's cool. Uh, do I like six sec... Do you think Ryan and the King were getting steamy? I don't think they were getting steamy, but I, I did appreciate the, fl um, the flirting. Dan, I don't understand your question, so sorry. Um, yeah, so on that note, I think I am going to get a cup of tea because I'm nearly out of drink. So thank you all, guys, everyone, for joining me. Um, I do appreciate that. Um, it's been really fun, especially the amount of interaction we've had this this episode, I, I really appreciate that. So thank you very much, guys. But I'm tired. I'm getting a headache. I need to record my vlog. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. I've been Michelle. You've been listening. And I will see you next week. Bye.